My name is Rami Pruitt. I'm a software engineer at a fame company. And today I have a very special video for you. If you have ever wanted to know what is the job of a software engineer, you know, what does my day-to-day -day job look like? This is the video for you. I'm gonna be breaking it down what do I do on my day-to-day -day job? And I'm actually going to do it by giving you a real problem. So I have this idea, right? I want a Discord bot that is a leaderboard of all the people who are watching my videos, right? So that I can see which one I'm going to... Who are the people on my, excuse me, who are the people on my, um, who are the people that are really rocking with me, right? And so this goes back to what I was saying originally, like software engineers have to come into a problem, right? And we have to bring order to it. We have to make decisions. We have to decide how is this going to look like? So generally an idea like this starts with a product manager right a product manager is supposed to go out he's supposed to listen to the customers and he's supposed to come up with a product a new feature that is going to make the customers happier it's going to get more users it's going to get more watch time um it starts with that so all right guys we have three commands this is what I want for my Discord bot, right? I want a Discord bot that can enter a command and see a leaderboard. I want a Discord bot that when I enter a command, I can be added to the game. And then I want it to be able to lead to, right? And then I want to be able to post a URL in a channel. Like let's say it's a YouTube video and I want to see whoever's the first to click the URL is, uh, will get points on the in the leaderboard so this is basically i've basically done for us the the product management side right could you imagine i've gamified the the process of of being in my discord i've gamified i've made it fun like i want to be number one right like let's say there's somebody on my in my leaderboard i'm like whoever's number one i'm going to give you uh free memberships to my channel, right? That's the type of stuff. I really wanna know the people who are rocking with me. And then when you inspire people to compete in order to, when you inspire people to, be, to compete, then you are, um, it will make them more, more wanting to compete. <laughs> That's a terrible way to say it. When you inspire people to compete, when you make it fun for them, then that's when you'll see some change. So I have these three ideas, right? And so maybe we can go down here and back up a little bit. Excuse me. I'm gonna come over here and then I'm back out. So we're gonna put over here and I'm gonna make one more for this. I wonder if I can do it. So we're gonna call this the business requirements. Right, we have our business requirements. Now we got to go in. So in my day-to-day -day job, I generally don't do things like this. I don't generally, generally as a software engineer, unless you're at a startup, you don't get to say what we're going to be working on. So let's move this down, right? And so now we have um, API. Like, what are the APIs that I need to learn in order to do this, right? So we need to know a few things, probably. We need to know the YouTube API, right? I think the integration with this, actually, I didn't even talk about that, right? Uh, fantasy leaderboard. I'm gonna add one more to this because I didn't make it clear. Inner fantasy leaderboard. And I'm gonna add one more. Um, 
I want to be able to be able to see who is liking and watching slash watching why I don't even know how to spell watching <laughs> watching sharing my videos right that way I can identify the real fans right the ones who are rocking with me when I have zero <laughs> people in the uh, stream but that's fine it's cool um so what APIs are we going to need to know? So we have these business requirements. We're going to need to know YouTube, YouTube's API, right? And we're going to need to know Discord's API. Now I'm going to make another field and we're going to say, what tech are we using? What is the tech stack, right? We need some type of database, right? When you think of a leaderboard, actually, we can even go even further than that. How big is this? So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the agile bike concept. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. MVP and bicycle. Right, there it is. Uh, let's see if I can get a close up of this image. All right, so I am going to leave this and I'm going to add. Share screen. Oh no, that's not what I want. Is this what you want? Yeah. So if you can see here, I'm not supporting this website, but the image is what I really like. Okay, there we go. We got the image on full screen. Not like this, like many people, guys, many people when you have a project, let me go back. I'm gonna add this timestamp. Many people, when you have a project, you will do what you see on the top here, right? You will try to um, make it all come together at the very end. Instead of iteratively starting with something that does work. And so, and then iteratively making it a little bit better. Right, like first it's a skateboard, now it's a scooter, now it's a bicycle, now it's a motorcycle, and now it's a car. And so when you are in a project and you spent a month on it and you have nothing, you have not done anything, that gives you a lot of inspiration to quit, right? That's why we start with a motorcycle, right? When you, or start with a skateboard, when you start with something that basically works, then um, then you can transition it to make it a little bit better. And so I want us to be thinking about that as we are making the bot. So we talked about the MVP and I'm going to switch it out. We are going to get back into sharing my screen. This guy like it All right, so we are back. Let's see. And we are making this bot. So we got a tech stack, right? So generally, when you're at a company, they've hired you because you already have the same programming skills as the most people on the team, right? They'll say, you know, you've been hired for a Golang position. You've been hired for a Python position. So, but because it's me by myself, I am the entrepreneur. I'm the creator of this. I can do whatever I want. And so here's a big question. 
I know many languages. What language do I want to do? Do I want to do it in Rust? Right? Why would I? Let me get a close up on myself. Why would I want to do a language in Rust? Well, if I wanted the program to be able to run to the end of the earth, not have any bugs, no one to be able to hack it, then I would pick Rust. But this Discord bot is just a toy. It's just, it's going to be something that, I don't know, maybe it could be great, maybe it could be trash, right? So I would not pick Rust for this. Rust is also a pain in the butt to write. I don't even know Rust, right? I can't even pick Rust. I'm just giving you an analogy. But these are things, these are things that I have to think about on my day to day job, like measuring the trade offs and then picking a solution based upon a reason. I can do Python. I know Python. Python is a beauty to write, right? But it's probably the slowest language that you will ever see in production. However, Instagram uses Python exclusively. They're a big Python shop, right? But you guys don't need critical performance when you're scrolling through Instagram, right? When you are seeing new images, they're having been computed. You don't necessarily need the fastest system. However, Python is a dynamic language, so it is more bug prone. Like I talked about Rust, Rust compared to Python. Like you're going, these two languages, these two languages, Python and Rust, do different things. One of them is a pleasure to write in. One of them is a pain in the ass. One of them is a pain to maintain, which is Python. One of them, maintaining it is beautiful. So, right, when you have critical, when you have critical software, right, like Discord, you want to get as many messages out as fast as possible. Audio, like, could you imagine having a call with somebody in Python and it would take five seconds just to hear him come back and forth? Like, you don't want none of that. You want it to be as fast as possible. So there are some use cases where we are um, might want to use something like Rust, but in this case, for Discord bot, I think Rust would be a pain in the butt. So I'm going to say, let's say Python for now. Um. So what cloud do I want to use, right? Like we talked about the tech stack. Do I want to use, oh my God. Oh, there it is. Man, I am learning new things every day. All right, there we go. So we talked about the cloud. Like what do I want to use for cloud? Do I want to use AWS, right? I have a lot of experience in that. What is AWS? What is AWS, right? Basically, back in the day, let's say me and you had a tech startup. We would buy a whole bunch of computers and they would sit on a rack. They would sit on a rack. And these computers would be the thing that we deployed to. And you see that a lot in like banks. American Express, they have on, or even a law firm, they have on-premise servers. That way, if they get hacked, they know if AWS gets hacked, they don't get hacked, right? There's some benefits to that. But let's say my app, me and your app, it scales up to a million users, right? Now that rack is super hot. It's so hot. We need to put fans on it. We need to buy more racks. It can't even fit in our, let's say, our apartment, our office anymore. Like, we have to manage that. And so that's where AWS comes in. AWS is like, hey, we'll manage that. When? Oh, my gosh. Let me see something. Ugh. Let me finish my statement. AWS, I forgot to put my Ethernet cord in. That's what I remember. But back to what I'm saying. AWS is a place where you can pay for what you um, 
what you use, right? If it scales up to a million, AWS will scale up with us. And if it if we scales down, um, let's say we have no customers anymore, it'll scale down and we pay for what we use. And this is what we call the cloud. So give me one second. I'm actually going to put my Ethernet cord in. All right, guys. Uh, all right, I'm back. So AWS is a great option, although it's not the best option, right? Like, I don't imagine that my app is going to scale up to millions of users. I'm not going to need a Kubernetes cluster. I'm not going to need any of that stuff. So I would say I would use something they used to call, they used to use Hero Code, but I would say something like fly.io, right? It's a lesser cloud. It's on the edge. Um, and they have a different business model, right? It's going to be a lot easier to get a server up and running. And that brings me, <laughs> um, like, anytime we talk about APIs, we're talking about a server. So what is... Let's say, what is the difference between a server, um, a server and a, yeah. So you probably heard a Discord server. You probably heard music server, You've a YouTube server. What is a server? What are we talking about? So um, I'm going to make a square. Can I do that? All right, there we go. Can I move you? All right, we have our square. So we have, let's say this is a server. How does the internet work, right? Whenever you go on the web and you look at a, a um, I don't know why it's doing that. We're gonna keep it there. Whenever you go on the web and you look at a server or go to a web page, excuse me, whenever you go to a web page, what's basically happening is your computer is talking to a server somewhere on the internet. Um, it's being routed through a DNS to the server in somebody's cloud. Maybe it's in AWS. AWS has a lot of computers all around the world. Maybe it said GCP. Um, but Basically, the internet was built on routing people to servers and talking to a certain port in there. So a server in my day-to-day -day job is basically like a restaurant. It is a restaurant, like somebody comes in to a restaurant and they ask for something to eat, they get served something, and then the customer's on their way and so basically, that's what a restaurant is for us in the context of programming. We get requests, like somebody's asking us for a, like, let's say we have an API that's serving a um, application. We have to respond. We have to give them a, a response, right? Here's the HTML page, or here's our YouTube Here's YouTube information on that user. Here's whatever. So a server is pretty heavy duty. Um, um, something, let's go back into this and we'll say, we'll make another dot, which is, no, I'm going make this. Let's say, what is a Lambda? I don't know why it's on the side. So lambdas are big. If you are a computer science student and you want a job and you have lambdas on your resume, you are goaded. P 
people know that you can be trusted because this is like a Lambda is something smaller than a server. Let's say that it is a food truck, which is you don't even you don't even like you don't own that server. Like you don't deploy code to that server or um, you don't own it. They just it's a food truck that you rent that like AWS or whatever you're working for has for you. And as soon as it's done, it goes to sleep. And we're just going to put that there. So we have lambdas and servers, which make up a lot of uh, the APIs that we work on. Lambdas are really good when you have something small, a request that's not doing a lot, and you don't need a server, then you use a lambda. And those are big in computer science right now. Um, those are the building blocks of it. If you have any questions, see if we got some people in here, just let me know. But um, so we have our lambda. Um, we have lambdas as a possible solution of things that we can do. And we're going to put that and we're going to I don't know. This thing is weird, but I'm glad I have it. So we got our YouTube APIs. We got Discord. We got Python. We got Flydale. Right? So this is going to be some research. Right? I have to do some research. Like, let's say I go to Discord right now. And we're going to get a close-up. Let's go back over here. Let's say I go to Discord right now, and I realize, hey, Discord does not allow you to enter in commands, right? Which I know is probably wrong. But that's great. That's great news because somebody has to find my business requirements, right? The sooner I understand when a issue, something is impossible, the better. The worst thing you can do as a programmer, the worst thing you can do as a programmer is to start a project. Let me see. I'm trying to get a timestamp for this. There we go. The worst thing you can do as a programmer is that somebody writes you a doc or a business requirement. You write a design, you jump straight in the code, and you figure out something is impossible. When that happens, then you've wasted everybody's time because now you have to come up with a new solution. And if you see what happens in, this happens in programming interviews as well. Like somebody, I'll, I'll jump into a problem thinking that I have it solved. And that is the complete wrong way to go. Um, hopefully the interview is kind of jerk, you know, stop you in your tracks before you do something like that. But yeah. Like, this is my job. I have to go, like, you see here, let's let's use this as an example. I don't have any experience with YouTube APIs. I don't have any experience with Discord APIs. I've never written a Discord bot before. You know, and what I am doing right here, as far as I know, it's never been done before. And so you can see sometimes, like, as a software engineer, I'm doing something, even though this is very minute, Somebody, nobody is doing it like me. Like, what if I told, what if I asked chat GPT right now? Hey, I want a Discord bot and I want it to be, I want to see a leaderboard anytime I do that. Let's do that as an example. Um, we're going to go to chat GPT and this is for you guys that think that chat GPT can do my job, right? Let's go to chat GPT. Hopefully nothing inappropriate comes up. <laughs> so we're on chat GPT. Let's see. We're not signed in. And I'm going to sit over here, you guys, and I want this as a timestamp. So I have to find these business requirements, right? I want a Discord bot that is going to create a leaderboard of all the users in there. Right. So we're going to ask chat GPT and we're going to make it clear. Hey, uh, I would like for you to write. Actually, excuse me, I'm not even on the same page. So we're going to stop sharing my screen and we're going to share and we're going to get on Discord. I mean, not Discord. Well, I've asked chat GPT a question or I've given it a command to write a Discord but the interest command displays a leaderboard of all the users in the game. The program should be in Python. 
I want it to be uh, the database. The database should be in SQLite. Write it for me. So, right, I've entered something quite complex. Let's see what ChatGPT can do. So look, it's written me a Discord bot and it's given a command leaderboard, right? Great, that's great. Like this is useful in some ways, right? I can see it has a leaderboard. It's generated a database, has a cursor, fetch all, and it'll show the leaderboards and it'll make a row and it'll print it for me. Bot command leaderboards, and it'll print it for me. So. This is a great starting point. So we see the Discord, the Discord commands. Um, but yeah, it's great. Let me see. Can you deploy this app to fly? Can you deploy this code to uh, AWS? Or no, that doesn't make any sense, right? So it's just a script, and the script is running on Discord, right? So it's giving me a little bit. And I would say we're probably not even done. There's a lot of design that probably has to go into this to fulfill like some of the things that I'm thinking about. I don't know if we could run this code. Create a Python script bot PI and define your Discord bot behavior. Running the bot, replace your bot token with the actual Discord bot token. Run the script. So it looks like, so they're giving us a little bit of uh, advice that we need to get a bot token on the Discord server. And so, yeah, there's more information, but this is like, this is a great starting port. Oh, we got two people in here. Uh -oh. What up, my guy, Pilgrimage? And what up, ADV Rasha Shaldari? Uh, and I don't even know how to say your name, my guy. The end? But yeah, so you see ChatGPT is helpful. It is helpful for defining some stuff, but this is not complete. And perhaps I might even change my mind. Maybe I don't even want SQLite in the future. Maybe I want a uh, NoSQL database. But these are all the questions I'm defining, right? In my in my bot, and you know this looks good enough for now, but. Um, Maybe I would need another command to enter the game. Um, let's do something else. Can you um, can you add to this code so that it um, tracks user habits via the and let me give you guys a close up. Via habit, uh, habits via the YouTube API. So look, it's describing, we're seeing some API tokens. I don't want to see recent YouTube activities. I want to see if they like the video, then whatever. So yeah, it didn't really, hmm, maybe I could have said this a little bit better. Maybe I could have said something a little bit better. <sighs> but yeah, see, and that's the problem. Sometimes as an engineer, I don't even know what I want to act. Like it all starts with me. How do I define my problems? What are my problems? How do I want to get there? These are things that I have to do as a software engineer. And this is why um, it's hard to replace me as a software engineer, just because um, there's no, the computer can tell you, you can tell the computer what to do, but the computer can't tell you what to do. I can tell you what to do. And so, uh, 
Let's get back to the Escala draw. So we're taking a look. We've seen that it is good enough, right? It can generate some code, but it can't give me the, the end. I have to go do research on my own into the Discord bot, into the YouTube APIs. And then I have to define some more business requirements. Then I have to know how does the internet work, what my tech stack is going to be, how I'm going to make this bot. And yeah, like the game, you know, if I had this in my Discord bot right now, like this would be great. But you have to know so many different facets of the game, right? I talked about you have to know how to program in Python. You have to know a little bit about the cloud and how that works. You have to be able to research the YouTube API and the Discord API. Let's pull that down. What and like and like mastering all these concepts takes time. Like some of the stuff, like um, you're not gonna get in school. Like school did not teach me how to do some of this stuff. Uh, oftentimes, I would go to class and my teachers would be like, "Hey, um, my job is not to teach you a damn thing." Yeah. <laughs> or my professors, excuse me. My job is not to teach you a damn thing. My job is to tell you what to look at and you should go study on your own. And I thought this dude was a jackass, right? Like, what the fuck am I paying you for? Why am I, you know, giving you 60 grand in tuition if you're not gonna teach me anything? But he has a point. You know, some people cannot teach you. I cannot, you know, in order for me to teach you how to fish, I have to, put you in the water and I have to like make things, put you in a situation where you have to overcome. I cannot always just feed you a fish because you will get used to me. And so a big part of my job is just figuring out what to do. Um, of course, with experience, I don't have to know. I don't have to think what to do. I know where to go, right? I know I want to fly it out. I know I want the cloud but it comes with understanding what it takes to bring an app from an idea all the way up to built. And so um, this is what my job looks like. Maybe like I would write a doc on how I would think, maybe I have my YouTube AVIs, I have my Discord, I know how I'm gonna deploy it to my server. And um, yeah. Once I know all of that stuff, then um, I will write a document. I will make a diagram, and then I will present it to my team. And they will give me feedback. Maybe they say, hey, we don't want Python. We want Java. Like, maybe we want Fly.io. Um, instead of Fly.io, we want to do it in AWS. I have to be flexible, right? Maybe they'll say, like, hey, like, this, you, instead of using a server, do you want to use a Lambda? Like, this doesn't seem that big. So it's like, imagine this. I've spent all this hours defining these requirements right in this doc. And then if somebody is just like, hey, I want you to start over. I want you to start all the way over from the beginning. I, ha I cannot be married to this idea. We might even, like, let's say I get into this Discord bot. I do some analysis and I realize nobody wants this. Nobody wants to use this. Nobody's going to use it at all. Um, sometimes the right answer is to throw away the entire project. I have a limited amount of time. Let's say I didn't have a job right now and I wanted to create a startup so that I can make money to live. Just because, just because I'm inspired and I have an idea does not necessarily mean that I should do it. Like if it's not gonna make money, if I can't prove that, that people want this thing, then it's a waste of time. Like, even though I can think, like, I've had, I've had, I can't tell you guys how many ideas I've had where I just, I felt so inspired. I thought I was going to make all this money. And then I didn't make an MVP, right? I put all these hours in and I didn't get anywhere, right? Because it's not always about inspiration. It's about discipline. It's about, doing the investigation work and defining ambiguity. If you guys are watching my stream earlier, I talked about cleaning your room, cleaning your room as a way to be a better software engineer. And it because 
now you get to see what I'm talking about. Like, I need to organize information. I need to spot. Um, I need to make decisions on ambiguous problems. And um, being organized makes things a lot easier to spot issues. <laughs> Excuse me. And so I think we have some more questions. What are some good projects that you need to make? What are some good projects to make? What about this project? Make a Discord bot. Make a Discord bot that plays music. Make a Discord bot that um, it's already been done before. But you know, sometimes do things that you love. Like I'm into Discord. I'm into YouTube, right? And these two things together, I've come up with this idea. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to make you a whole lot of money. It can be just to learn a new programming language. Like I didn't even talk about that. I've been thinking about learning a new programming language, and this project is not that difficult. And it could be a great way to get my feet wet with a new programming language. So uh, it could be good like that. Um, yeah, think about the things you love. I don't know. Maybe you love Uber. Maybe you love DoorDash. See what APIs they have. And make a call. Build it in the cloud and then put it on your resume. Put it on GitHub. Um, I, I would do something with ChatGPT right now. Like, I don't know. Like, ChatGPT. Um, I don't know. But whatever. <laughs> I've been thinking about, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've been thinking about making a, a what is it, a calendar app through ChatGPT. Like, it's small, it's niche, and it'll, hopefully I'll learn a lot of things along the way. Like, um, so whenever you think about a project, you want to make sure that you're doing something that it's new, it'll challenge you a bit, but also, remember, make it small. You don't have to make a billion dollar corporation in a month. Like, maybe my chat GPT app or my Discord bot app. What is the MVP? Let's define that. So, we're going to come back up here. What does the MVP look like? Ah, I don't even know. I did it once and I can't do it again. There it is. Ah, what is my MVP for this project? Well, let me see. I'm going to get a close up on the screen. Why is it not scrolling? Why are we not scrolling? I don't know why this thing is not working. Make a Devin clone. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to reshare my screen. Right. So we're back. What is the minimum viable product for my MV, um, for my product? Right. Let's say we have a Discord app. How about we enter a command? We enter a command and see a leaderboard. That would probably be step one. Right. I think step two, how about, um, we post the link and whoever clicks on it gains one point. Um, and that's probably gonna need, yeah, that's probably be minimal viable product too. And then on offline, leaderboards, we enter command. Um to link our YouTube account. And um, anytime we anytime we post a link with the command, 
whoever watches it gets another point. Whoever watch whoever watches it gets another point, right? So I have these three MVPs, right? We enter command and see a later board. How long do you think that's going to take? I just did a chat GPT of how to make a bot command. It'd probably take me four hours, right? How good would that feel, right? You might think, hey, just to do that, if it only took you four hours, it should not be that satisfying. But no, that's great. It's just great start. And it's something I can do in my spare time. Let's move this out of the way. It's something I can do in my spare time. And so that's what it means to be a, a minimum viable product. You start with something small, you build upon it, and then you make it into that. And so, yeah, I might do some of this off camera, but um, yeah, and some of this is going to require a little bit of a server. But um, the, the second one is going to be like looking at this, the second one is going to be a little bit tougher um, because I'm actually going to have to integrate with, uh, you're going to have to store some, uh, you're going to have to have a web page somewhere if you want to like redirect. I don't know if I can do that all in Discord, but it's going to require some research. And then the third one is definitely, that's that's a big one. And so that would be the car. Like just as we talked about earlier, we start with something small and then build it all the way up. Um, that's the way we'll play this game. And so, yeah, like there's a part of us, right, that wants to be undisciplined. We don't want to clean our room and we don't want to make the code we want to do things in a wild dysfunctional way and we but we at the same time we want to feel like we finished the app but that's not how things work it's work it's discipline that's what makes you a software engineer following making a plan and sticking with the plan right i define a lot of different things right i've had an mvp i have programming languages i'm did business requirements. Like this is what I would do if I was in a startup. See, I own less of this working at a company like Twitch. I only have to worry about the code, but bringing a product from zero to finish requires a whole lot of discipline and a whole lot of investigation. Cause you, I just don't know everything. I don't know everything about the front end. I don't know everything about the back end. I don't know everything about Python but I know a lot about all these different things that I could bring it together. And so I think that is my um, spiel on what I do on my day-to-day -day job. Like I just define requirements and um, I, I think I'm ready to start at least, but yeah, I might build this uh, off stream and like come back and show you guys what it looks like, but yeah, this is where I'm at. Um, thank you for tuning in.